you're gonna take a quarter and you're gonna balance it on the edge of a bill. This is not a trick. It's just a challenge that anybody can do at home. And you need a, a bill. You can use your 100, Ralph. Okay. <laughs> and Billy, you can use the dollar that you have. I got it, thanks. So if you if you fold it like this, all right? right. And you put the coin on the corner of it like this. The, even if the center of mass is not on that side of the bill or this side of the bill, if it's on this side, the coin's gonna tip this way as it balances out and the friction's gonna allow the bill to come out this way. If the center mass is on the far bill, it's gonna tip the other direction and slowly pull apart. And you'll realize, especially if you hold from the bottom, it gives a little more give in the paper. You can actually get it to balance on its edge, straight out, no trick. Go ahead and pull it, and don't drag it across the table. If you can, slightly lift it off the table as you're doing it. As you pull it tighter, you oh, tighter Ralph's about to get it. Oh, I see, I see, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Ralph's got it now. Ralph, I know. You can actually lift it up. I'm off the ground. Ah, uh, yeah, and throw the kick. Throw the kick. Wait, look at this. Wait, I'm very proud of myself. Billy, of myself. Billy, Ralph's got it. I got it too. It's off the ground. That's all done by finding its own center of mass as you pull those apart uniformly. Now, I'm gonna tape these three ends together. Now, you want them roughly the same length, because when the orb inflates because of static electricity, then we're gonna want them to actually um, inflate evenly. Sometimes if you don't have enough of a static charge, it doesn't inflate evenly, but that's okay. All right, so I'm gonna take this, tie this into a knot here. Okay. Great. So now I've got a knot there, and I've got a knot there, and I'm gonna cut the excess off here. And that's it, that's all you need. Now, I usually make a few more of these just when I do the experiment, that way if I lose one, I don't have to stop everything I'm doing. And if you have friends, grab a couple more PVC pipes because it's a lot of fun to go back and forth to see how long you can keep it up in the air. And then we're gonna transfer the same charge to this piece of tinsel and then they'll repel because like charges repel. And it looks like that. And if I can get a bigger charge, I can get it to float a little bit higher. you how to set up this experiment. Uh, you're gonna need five toothpicks. They don't have to be the color toothpicks. You can actually use any ones. The thicker the toothpick, the better. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna bend them. We're gonna try not to break them in half, but they're gonna bend like that. And we're gonna do it for all five. Now, we're gonna put them in this arrangement with the bend parts towards the center. And if they don't line up, that's okay. Just bend them even more. And that's it. That's the shape right there. All the bends into the center with five different toothpicks. And all you have to do is just add water. By adding a little bit of droplets to the water in the center, what's happening is the wood, through that capillary action, starts absorbing the water. This absorption of water causes the wood to expand as it swells up. That swelling up straightens out those fibers and causes these toothpicks to move. Now you can just do this on a table and make it look like you have superpowers. <laughs> Isn't that great? It moves on its own. Yeah, so use a second pen. Right. So if you take the pen like this, yeah. and you just swat it like this, yeah. you can bring your hand down. Now this, very few people will look at this. If you want to practice at home, you end up just putting tape on it and you don't have to worry about it at all. You just slap. Right. And bring your hand down and present this. So here's, yeah, here's your pen, right? And nailed it. <laughs> as long as you didn't listen to, to it rolling on the floor behind me. Perfect. Yeah. And then, yeah. <laughs> oh, I saw the, I saw the little lap action going on there, pulling it off the back of the table. That's, I saw that. <laughs>
Maybe you saw that. I don't think other people would see that. Okay, I won't. I won't call attention to it. Oh, it's supposed to be looking at this. But this is now your optics of invisibility. That's cool. That's fun. Thank you. Watch. Did you see that? I have several pens I planted up my na nasal cavity. You, you can keep those pens now, by the way. By yeah, the way. Don't want them back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to show you how to draw an anamorphic image. Now I scoured the internet and found a super simple way to do it. And you're just going to need a few items. You're going to need some paper, a pencil, a regular marker. I'm going to use a Sharpie here. A regular marker, a fine tip marker, and I'm going to be using a straight edge. Actually, I'm using a triangle for this one. To do this, I'm going to draw a four inch by four inch square. Now I'm using this triangle because that will give me my right angles. And if I do this right, we're going to end up having a drawing that looks like there's a hole in the table. So you have a square. Now just connect the diagonal. And then we're going to be making a couple of L's. I'm also drawing this upside down compared to what you guys need to be doing on your side. So hopefully it'll look better for you than it does for me. Upside down, it's kind of confusing. This probably doesn't look like much yet. That's just because these are just lines and shapes right now. Not that exciting. But as we start to add in the shading and give it perspective, or give it this perspective, it's gonna look more and more three-dimensional. So this next layer is, we're gonna use the fine tip marker. We're gonna make straight edge here and here. This will be the edge of our pit into the table, which makes sense because when you can see something up close, it's very defined. And that's what this straight edge is doing. I was never good at drawing, so I always wanted to take my time, which is funny because I'm rushing right now. All right, next step, take your marker with a wider tip on it, and we're gonna end up drawing out these lines. Don't draw the diagonal, just the lines. Now try not to break that line up there, even though I did a little bit there. And what I mean by that is don't go over it. Okay, now the next step is we're gonna fill these in. I'm gonna start off with this square over here and you'll see why I made that square because that's gonna be the pit. That's gonna be where, where it kind of gets hard to see what's going on as far as perspective wise right now. But we're just gonna fill in this spot. Again, you wanna stay within the lines. So take your time on the edges here and then you can go a little bit faster after you have those edges defined. And then we're going to alternate and we're going to make a black stripe up here. Now I'm doing the edge first so that I can go a little bit faster after that, but highly recommend doing the edges first. By the way, this is going to look better on camera than it does in person. And that's because a camera only has, well, the our cameras I'm using only have one lens. Well, you have two eyes. When you're seeing something with your eyes, you're actually seeing it from two different angles. Even though they're in the front of your head, you're actually looking at them from two different points. That allows you to see depth a lot better than with one eye. And there you have it, a pit and table. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make one of these. This is a walk along glider or forever flyer. Believe it or not, these will actually fly forever as long as you're willing to walk along the side of it. Now I'm gonna go over a step-by-step -step process of how to make them, but if you didn't understand how they work, it would look like magic. So let's cover the four forces of flight. When you throw a frisbee, there's four forces at play. Thrust, drag, lift, and weight. Your arm gave the frisbee thrust. That's the force that moves an aircraft in the direction of motion. On a plane, it's the engine, the propeller, or even the rocket that creates the thrust that is moving the plane forward through the air. But drag is the force that is opposite to the direction of motion. Drag is caused by the friction of air molecules, and it's the reason the frisbee slows down. Lift is the force that holds up the frisbee. It's caused by a difference in air pressure between high air pressure below and low air pressure above the frisbee. And weight 
which is caused by gravity, that's the force that brings the frisbee back to the ground. Lift is opposite to weight, thrust is opposite to drag. If the force of lift is greater than the weight, the aircraft will rise. If thrust is greater than drag, the aircraft not only moves forward, it speeds up as it goes. So when we're talking about steady flight at a constant altitude, at a constant speed, all forces are balanced. All right, now that we understand the four forces of flight, let's apply them towards a paper airplane. Now, a glider doesn't really have thrust, so we're gonna use the other forces. Weight has to do with the paper itself. I strongly recommend the lightest paper you can find. Encyclopedia paper, phone book paper, as long as your parents are okay with that. At the end of the episode, I'm gonna show you how to make this walk along glider because it won't work for every paper airplane. It's gonna work for a paper airplane that you can walk alongside of, which will help us with our drag. Which brings me to this. This is gonna help us create lift with an updraft. It's a panel that's uh, two feet by three feet. And I have a couple paper clips here for a launch pad. And as I walk forward, air is gonna actually blow against this board and it's gonna keep the paper airplane up. This paper airplane with this panel makes a paper airplane that flies forever. Well, as long as you can walk along the side of it. So let's get this thing going. All right. Three, two, one. <laughs> and you can get them to ascend and descend. <laughs> Check it out. All you need is a deck of cards, and out of this deck, you only need nine playing cards. So just count out nine cards one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Great. Take the rest of the pile, get rid of it. We don't need it. Now, take those nine playing cards, square them up, and flip them over face up so now we can see the numbers on them. And when you fan them out, you're gonna look for the third card from the bottom of the fan, or what is also the third card from the top of the pile if they were flipped over. I know it gets a little tricky with that. So let me show you on my side, it's the nine of hearts. One, two, three, okay? That's also the third card from the top because if I flip my hand over, one, two, three, that's the nine of hearts. Now look at that card, memorize that card, but do not pull that card out. Just keep it in the third position. Now, close the fan, and here comes the magic part. All you have to do is remember your card. Now, your card could be a completely different card. It does not have to be the Nine of Hearts. It will work for any card, which is why this is so amazing. Now, all you have to do is spell your card. Now, my card was a nine, so I'm gonna spell out the word nine. If you had an ace, you would spell A-C-E. If you had a two, you'd spell T-W-O. Same with a jack queen, or king. You spell out the value of the card. So we're gonna spell nine on my side. N-I-N-E. One card on top of each other. And when you're done spelling that card out, take the rest of the pile and place it directly on top of those cards on the table. Now pick all of them up together. Now we're gonna spell the middle word, which is the same for everybody. So it's nine of, so we're gonna spell of. O-F, one card on top of another and then take the rest of the pile, place it on top. Pick them all up. Now you spell the suit. So if yours was the clubs, you would spell C-L-U-B-S. Mine is the hearts, so I'm gonna spell hearts. Here we go. H-E-A-R-T-S. Take the rest of the cards, place it on top. Now, you could have had a different card than mine. You could have had the two of clubs or the three of diamonds, which would be far more letters than anything I picked. But if we spell the word magic right now, and you spell the word magic on your side, if you flip over the letter C in the word magic, that will be your card. Check it out. M-A-G-I-C. 